Thank you, Mr. President, my colleagues in the Senate. During my grandma's twilight years, she, let, she set out to write down her life stories, which she called bits and pieces, and she dedicated it to Andy Rooney. Now, my Nana just wanted to write down the good stuff, but my mom, who's a writer, encouraged her to write about the not so good stuff too. And I'm so glad she did because the stories are now that much richer. Somehow with the passing of time, what felt like shame to my grandma transformed into stories of incredible human strength because they were just full of real life. Now I think the same way about the history of our country. If we don't teach about the bad stuff, we miss stories of perseverance and bravery that can inspire and lift up our children. Now the other night when we were sitting around the dinner table with my kids, my grown kids, I asked them what it was like to learn about black history when they were in school. And my 20-year-old kid said it was hard. What my kids so thoughtfully explained is that when you're little, you tend to reduce stories to a very simplistic good and evil. Think about children's stories and their themes of heroes and villains. This, my kids said, is how little kids internalize the history of blacks and whites. And she said it was hard to be white, and thus in the minds of little people on the side of the villain in the story. Now that's some tough stuff. And as a mom, I kind of knew my kids were internalizing it like that. So I explained to them that it is horrible what black Americans, how black Americans were treated. And just as parents who are getting divorced must explain to their children that it's not their fault, I made sure my kids understood that our country's history was not their fault. And as they got older, I taught them the skills they needed to make sure they knew how to fight against racism in themselves and others so that they could make the world a better place for their black classmates. Now, during Black History Month here in the Senate, we rise to tell stories of accomplished black Americans. And it's good that we do that, but we need to do more. We must struggle with how to teach our country's history the good and the bad, in a way that allows our children to thrive, overcome, and grow so they can reach a higher place in race relations than the generation before them. And as lawmakers, the onus is on us to unravel the laws of our past and recognize that some were written to favor white people over blacks. And then we must change them so that we can aspire to the fundamental principle of our great nation, where all men and women are created equal. And this is hard, because it's hard for white people to see where the laws favor us, because we haven't lived the laws like our black friends have. So when our black colleague points out that a law is racist, we white people, we need to listen. And it's hard to be called a racist, especially when we don't mean to be. But you know what? It's a whole lot easier if we just acknowledge that we can sometimes act in racist ways even when we don't mean to. Because that just means that we don't fully know, really know, what it's like to live a black person's life. So to my white colleagues, if you find yourself saying, I'm not racist, stop. And say to yourself, maybe there's something I'm not seeing. And try to listen a little harder. That's what will allow you to see how a law might be favoring white people over black people. And the amazing thing is that you, you, have the power and responsibility to change it. So just listen and let your children listen to all the history, good and bad, because 
This is how villains are transformed into heroes, and the story will have a much better ending. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well.